So amidst the hype around AI image and video generation is another key vertical getting a huge boost, the art and science of reality capture. Now reality capture isn't new per se, but the level of democratization that we're experiencing has been staggering. And of course the cost of computing power has dropped dramatically, making photorealistic 3D model creation accessible on consumer hardware. The stuff that you needed massive data centers for and teams of computer vision experts, you can now do on a decently powered desktop or heck, even in the cloud. And damn, is it moving fast. Remember Nerfs? Only a couple years old and along comes Gaussian splatting, which is faster, editable, and readily integratable. We're talking 100 FPS rendering performance on a modern GPU. I've already done an eight minute deep dive on Gaussian splatting, so if you haven't checked that out, check it out over here. But in this video, I wanna talk about all the cool stuff that you can do with techniques like Gaussian splatting and reality capture in general. So get ready for some visual umami. It is remarkable to witness the pace of progress in this timeless quest to connect the physical and digital worlds. Number one, memory capture. This is to me perhaps the killer consumer use case for 3D and 4D capture. Check this example out. My parents retired earlier this year and I've immortalized their home forevermore in this Gaussian splat. Photo scanning is perhaps the most future-proof medium we have access to today. So go out there, capture the spaces, places, people, and objects that you truly care about. It is perhaps then unsurprising that Apple is leaning into this very direction for their own spatial media initiatives, 3D photos and videos that are intended to capture moments that matter to you the most. Of course, so you can view them on a Vision Pro headset. But it's not just static scenes, they're also focusing on 3D video that you can capture with your frickin' iPhone. And and let me tell you, stereo magnification off a narrow baseline is very, very possible. The next one is reality bending effects. Given how close Gaussian splatting is to a 3D point cloud representation, another benefit over nerfs, by the way, creators like Ruben are adapting their point cloud shaders to work beautifully on 3D capture, creating reality bending magic sort of like this. I think it's only a matter of time until we see these effects in some sort of music video. So since we have this easier to edit representation with Gaussian splatting versus neural radiance fields, the level of creativity and manipulation you can pull off is amazing. Check out this other demo by Ruben that's giving me Oppenheimer vibes meets of course the Thanos snap. But you don't have to just blow up the world. You can also make some very clean animated reveals using Gaussian splatting. No surprise that everyone's obsessed with Luma's loading animation. I mean, just check these examples out. In fact, I used it in a recent sponsored engagement with Lenovo as well, and they loved it too. You can also reskin 3D captures with generative AI. In other words, taking the output from these reality capture tools and running them through something like Kyber or Runway Gen 1. I just got the new DJI Mavic Mini and I just had to put this to the test, making a 3D drony combined with a healthy dose of generative AI. The results are amazing. You can create some very captivating loops well suited for social media. And it's not just static captures of the world. You can also create dynamic 3D scenes. There's a bunch of approaches being explored in academia here, and they're a huge step up from the rather GTA 3 looking videogrammetry pipelines of yesteryear that you may remember from the likes of Microsoft. Now the potential for dynamic capture is absolutely amazing because you're not just capturing a static place and reframing it infinitely, but you're doing a legitimate performance capture of dynamic entities in the world, and then you can do all sorts of crazy stuff in post-production. Looking at some of the tracking markers over here, just imagine the potential for visual effects. You could easily attach particle emitters, objects, etc., to dynamic captures that you do. But it's not just quality, you can also get really, really good performance. I mean, just look at these results. The ease with which you can distribute this stuff is way higher. I mean, you're getting 80 FPS performance on a consumer GPU right now. If you throw in other compression techniques, I wouldn't be surprised if you're streaming dynamic 4D Gaussians right into your browser very, very soon. Now a caveat with these approaches is that you do need a multi-camera array to capture this stuff. So you can't just take a bunch of iPhones, you need to have cameras that are synchronized that you know the intrinsics and extrinsics for. But as we discussed earlier, I suspect this will be a very interesting line of research for academics, but also Apple as they make 3D video capture more accessible with say an iPhone. Relightability is another direction that's being explored. I love this example by Infinite Realities. You can see how this is the same person in a variety of different lighting conditions and we're looking at the Gaussian splat. The way they pulled this off is they captured Henry in a light stage where you can use an HDRI image to actually light the subject in a certain way. 
but there's also a bunch of interesting exploration happening to make this more accessible as well, where you can take your static Gaussian splat, delight it, and then relight it using neural rendering techniques. I've been playing around with a tool created by a South Korean company called Beeble, and they're doing an amazing job in this space. Just take a look at this. I can take a capture of myself and swap out a bunch of HDRI environments and notice how it's accurately relighting me. And if you go beyond just using the albedo maps and the normal maps they give you and use their neural rendering engine, they can even simulate light transport effects through your skin, stuff like subsurface scattering, which will make it a lot closer to that Henry video that we just saw. Now there's a lot of other cool stuff that you can do by virtue of bringing this into a game engine. You could take the photorealistic 3D tiles from Google, use that as sort of your scaffolding to anchor these scans and get the surrounding context from Google, but have the high detail ground level precision that you've captured with your own scans. You can make some really, really cool stuff with this. You've got plugins for Unity and Unreal as well, so you can bring these into a game engine and do all the other cool stuff that you're used to doing in these type of environments. A great example here is this one by Bad Decision Studios where they did this capture off a boat in Dubai of this iconic landmark and then took it all the way with Unreal Engine. And I call this use case kid bashing reality where you can start building this library of the spaces, places and objects that you care about bring them into a 3D environment like Unreal or Unity, compose them together and pull off amazing results like this that would have taken a lot more effort if you did this all manually. You can almost think of it like 3D screenshots for the real world, right? So start building your own stock library of these 3D assets so you can use them in your future creations. Speaking of distribution not being a problem, here's a really cool demo by Lawn Labs running volumetric video captures on a freaking Apple device. So you've got Unity, you've got Unreal, you've got Browser, and you've got Metal implementations. So again, distribution isn't going to be a problem. And many of these folks haven't really even gone down the rabbit hole of asset optimization, streaming optimization, and so forth. So plenty of headroom there for distribution down the line. There's also really cool state-of-the-art stuff that's been happening in the past here. Uh, Google did a really great job with DeepView Video just a couple years ago using this sort of layered mesh representation that they derived from the previous state of the art before nerfs called multi-plane images or MPI. This data set is out available in the public. So look out for them. When you see newer research papers, you'll find them reprocessing these older results. Again, this was captured with a synchronized array of Yi action cameras, but I'm excited to see what happens when capture becomes a lot more democratized. Now, kit bashing is really cool, but what if you want to do more fine grain edits of your splat? I think there's a ton of potential here and new tools on the horizon that make this possible. For example, Spline recently added Gaussian splatting support. So you can import your PLY files, crop them, and compose them with a bunch of web and 3D assets. Like you could take your landing pages to the next level with this type of stuff and obvious implications for e-commerce as well. So Play Canvas has this super splat tool where you can say, take a subject capture, isolate it, and then put a different environment map, whatever HDR that you prefer. Really, really cool implications for e-commerce. I mean, obviously sneaker retail comes to mind because that's just such a popular use case when showcasing object scans, but also think about the implications for fashion. Imagine going to Banana Republic or Zara and seeing captures like this to see what something would actually fit like. And then in the future, maybe you even upload your own scan. Now, pro-grade virtual productions have already been using reality capture. Just look at Mandalorian, but Gaussian splatting and nerfs are going to be that next level of detail to have these really rich background plates that you can add your subject matter to and of course relight everything accurately. And beyond the Mandalorian virtual productions of the world, gaming has already been using reality capture. Just look at games like Battlefront or Call of Duty. These folks figured out that it's easier to take that DSLR, go out and capture that nondescript LA backlog and capture the complexity of reality, even if you have to optimize it after the fact. Kit bashed together in a broader 3D world, it really, really brings everything to life and makes it look far, far more closer to the real world. Way easier than trying to do that all from scratch. Now, heritage conservation is another amazing use case. Polycam is actually working with UNESCO to capture various landmarks and monuments that are being impacted by the Ukraine war currently taking place. I had a chance to sit down with Singularity University's publication to go into greater detail on why we're seeing this democratization and also the amazing use cases that it unlocks. If that's of interest to you, check it out in the description below. So to bring this all back, all of this is moving towards this future of spatial computing and spatial media. Now, while terms like metaverse are absolutely overused and might draw a bunch of eye rolls, the underlying spirit is the recognition that 3D environments, 3D captures of the real world truly matter. This is one way we can start connecting bits and atoms and create this connective tissue or substrate 
trade between the physical and digital worlds that we operate in every single day. And techniques like Gaussian splatting are gonna play a key role in that connective tissue. The real large scale ambition here is the hope for a real time 3D map of the world. Now we've already had stuff like Google Earth, Immersive View, Apple Maps that give you the static 3D rendition. Now we finally have the technologies to keep this stuff up to date. In other words, there's the building the model of the world, and then there's the maintaining that model of the world. And with all of these methods that we're talking about, I think we may finally have technology to solve that maintaining the model part through crowdsourcing. That visceral feeling of being in that space or place is just so powerful. But even if we leave out all the VR applications, the content creation and commerce potential is off the charts. So I hope this video gives you a good idea of the kind of stuff that you can do with reality capture. Now reality capture is a massive space to deconstruct, but I hope this gives you an idea of the types of stuff that you can do today with reality capture techniques like Gaussian splatting. In the next video, I wanna go far deeper into human capture. What are all the big tech players doing? What is the state of the art in research? And beyond just environments, how do we bring ourselves into the virtual realm, whether it's for telepresence or media and entertainment? So stay tuned for that video. All right, so that is it for this video. If you enjoyed this and want to get this type of content sent neatly to your inbox, consider subscribing to the Creative Tech Digest. It serves as a companion to this YouTube channel where I give you all the links that you need to go into this stuff in a lot more detail. That's it for today, and I will see y'all in the next one.